Hi everyone, welcome to Motorcycle Hard Parts. In this video, I'm going to show you how I check and adjust valve clearances on a Suzuki DR650, which the Suzuki DR650 runs with a rocker arm setup with adjusters, which is very common. When most people talk about the pain and expense associated with valve clearances, they're usually talking about a bucket and shim setup, which is much more time consuming than the setup we have here. Now if you're not very familiar with the general operation of a four stroke engine, having a good grasp on the individual four strokes, uh, which is suck, squeeze, bang, blow of course, that's really going to help you understand what's happening in this video. But we'll dive in anyway and we'll check out a bit about valve clearances on a Suzuki DR650. First things first, wash the bike and try and get all of the dirt from around the top of the engine so when we open the valve covers, dirt doesn't fall into the engine. When I do this, I remove the side panels, the seat, the tank, and block any exposed fuel passages on the carby. The next step is a handy hint. I take my air gun and blow out the spark plug area to remove any dirt that could fall into the spark plug's holes. And then, I remove only one spark plug. Why I do this is because in order to check the valve clearances, we need to have the piston at top dead centre on the compression stroke. Taking the spark plug out will allow any compressed air inside to escape and it makes getting the piston to top dead centre a lot easier. I then remove the two valve covers located here which will expose the valves and rocker arms. I then take off the flywheel inspection bolt and timing plug which these will tell me when the piston is at top dead centre. As I turn the nut inside, counterclockwise, it will turn the engine over. And there are marks on the flywheel that indicate when the piston is at top dead centre, which you can see through the flywheel inspection window. Warning, warning, warning. The piston reaches top dead centre twice on a four stroke engine, once on the compression stroke and once on the exhaust stroke. We need to make sure we're checking the valve clearances when the piston is at top dead centre on the compression stroke only. But, how do we know when it's at top dead centre on the compression stroke and not the exhaust stroke? Well, that's easy. Watch the valves. The compression top dead centre mark will be the mark that shows up after the inlet valves open, but before the exhaust valve opens. So I'll watch here for the mark that shows up after the inlet valves open, which are the ones that are closest to the airbox, by the way. Once we have top dead centre, I then have to check the clearances between the rocker arm adjuster and the valve tip using a set of feeler gauges. Feeler gauges are small, thin sheets of metal that are cut to a particular thickness and marked accordingly. These are used to measure clearances between two items simply by placing them between them. What we are checking is the clearance between the valve adjuster here and the valve tip here. The DR650's clearances on the intake valve should be between 0.08mm and 0.13mm and the exhaust should be between 0.17mm and 0.22mm and this measurement should be taken when the engine is cold. So what I'll do now is demonstrate taking the measurement of the clearance on one of the DR650's intake valves. Okay, so this is the inlet valve and I'll just quickly check in there. You'll see that doesn't go all the way in. That's a 13. It's in there, but it's very, very tight. So what I'll do is grab a 10. And the 10 goes through. So that one is in spec. Now because the 0.13mm feeler gauge didn't fit and the 0.10mm feeler gauge did, our clearance we can safely assume is between 0.10 and 0.12 which is within the range of our factory specification of 0.08mm to 0.13. So this valve doesn't need any adjustment. If a valve is out of spec though, the way we make the adjustment is take an 8mm spanner and release the lock nut on the adjuster. Back off the adjuster a little bit. We then place a correctly sized feeler gauge 
and gently tighten the adjuster onto the feeler gauge. Once the adjuster is in place and not too tight on the gauge, we then lock the lock nut back up whilst holding the adjuster with a special tool or, in my case, a pair of pliers. Then we recheck the clearance to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose. And don't get frustrated, it can take a few times to get it right. Once all four valves on the DR650 are set to their specifications, turn it over by hand at the flywheel bolt, just to make sure it's all right. Then put it all back together and start her up. going to be a problem. Oh yeah, there we go. One more. Okay. <laughs> now it's got to come back again. Yeah. Most things that will affect valve clearances will make them tighten over time, not loosen. So what changes them? Well, heat. When the valves get hot, they're metal, they expand. It's also constantly being pulled by a spring and can stretch a bit. Also, if your air cleaner hasn't been maintained and dirt and grit gets into the engine, it can wear the head where the valve is actually seated, which pushes it slightly upward into the head. All of these things will make your valve clearances tighter. If they get too tight, the engine can be hard to start when warm. That can be a good sign that you need to do your valve clearances. And it can also get so bad that you can lose compression because one of the valves may be constantly stuck open a little bit and that means the compressed air fuel mixture can escape. And there you go. That's valve clearances on a rocker arm and adjuster setup like the Suzuki DR650 has. It is fiddly, you can take a bit of time to do, but you can always sleep well knowing that it doesn't run an under bucket shim setup, which... Ugh can be very frustrating at times to do. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you soon.